Hey guys, it's me, Mr. D50, and welcome back to Higurashi. So, last time, I'm pretty sure we died, or at least we're going to be dying. And I think this is going to be our last section of the chapter, so let's see where we go from here. You're probably wondering how I died. Well, let me tell you how. My head was pounding. The sky was bright. That doesn't sound like we're dead. It was cold too. It hurt. Each sensation I felt led to a new and different one awakening. When I came to, I was lying face first on a dry riverbed. A few body parts hurt a lot. The skin over a bunch of my joints was torn, turned blue or red or oozing blood. Oof. I could tell it was my bones that were in pain from the agony I felt whenever I moved. I looked up and saw how high the bridge from which I had fallen was. Considering I dropped from there, it was a miracle that I could open my eyes again. Right next to me was a broken upside down car seat, which I guess some pranksters had brought here. Maybe this thing had been conveniently lying right under me, allowing me to escape instant death. Miraculous. Of course, I didn't know whether this miracle was fortunate or unfortunate. I'd failed to die, and now I was still stuck in this insane world. How long had I been unconscious for? The sun was high in the sky, so it looked like only one or two hours had passed. But my body sluggishness didn't make it feel at all like so short a time had gone by. Mentally, it felt like I'd been asleep here for a decade. <laughs> the more feeling returned to my body, the more the pain flooded in. It hurt so much it would have been better not to have woken up. I needed to get to a doctor. Yeah, to Coach's Clinic. The term Coach's Clinic brought memories back one after another. Memories I wish I hadn't recalled. Satoko is no longer on the bridge. She would have returned to Hinamizawa by now. And she would put on some clothes go to the clinic, get a checkup, and report on how crazy I had seemed. The police were waiting for me without a doubt. This time, would they find out for real that I'd killed her uncle and arrest me? Or would they just send me to a mental institution like I thought they might? Still, I didn't care what it was. Please, someone, stop all this pain. You can boil me or cook me after that, whatever you want. I began to walk unsteadily, just limping along. I went downstream, and then through an animal trail-like path in the woods. I walked haphazardly, searching for a path I knew. This is what usually happens to the demons in the story. They don't quite get killed, and then they make their evil comeback at the end of the movie, and then, you know... And then they get killed again, presumably. Eventually, I came across a familiar road and set off towards the clinic. Not to my house, but to the clinic, which had treated me like a lunatic. It was hot and humid. There was no wind, and the air was stagnant. For a while now, I'd been smelling the terrible stench of burned eggs and it made my face scrunch up. And then, at last, I noticed something. I couldn't hear any cicadas. It was the first time I'd heard Hinamizawa be so utterly silent. When I thought back, it seemed like birds always chirped in the morning, cicadas always cried loudly in the afternoon, and Higurashi always rose up in chorus in the evening. Always something to hear. Oh, I hear spooky music, though. I couldn't hear a single insect. 
The only thing I could hear was the rustling of the wind brushing the treetops. I'd never experienced this sort of quiet before. Even the only sound coming from the trees lacked life somehow. The trees were yellow, and many leaves were spread on the ground despite it being too early for autumn. Even the weeds that had been growing so persistently at the side of the road had yellowed, browned, and lost their vigor. Only the sunlight itself was the June Hinamizawa I knew. And yet, it seemed like the seasons had switched all of a sudden. <sighs> Looking at the fallen leaves and rotting weeds let me to spot a few small insects turned on their backs. They weren't moving. They were corpses. I looked closer to see insect corpses scattered all about. Like a child had collected them as samples and then strewn them about. This stench. What was it? It was terrible. Like burned eggs. Combined with all the bug corpses and leaves falling from the trees in summer. Had someone sprayed herbicides or pesticides around here? Even at school, we apparently fumigate. They call it pest dis uh, disinfection or something. Once or twice a year. I hadn't run into anybody, despite how bright it was outside. It was mid-afternoon, and yet it felt like I was sauntering about at midnight. Well, with this smell, nobody would want to be walking around outside. Just what was this, anyway? There was no sound, no noise, not even a breath. Hinamizawa was silent. The school would come into view, right after turning this corner. And yet, I couldn't hear any commotion at all. None of the shouts or grunts that children always made. It was simply quiet. Just as pretending to ignore the silence had grown intolerable, I saw the school. And finally I heard something. It was the sound of a few trucks. There were a few very tall trucks parked in the schoolyard, idling. About ten workers in raincoats were unloading things from their trunks. It was hot and humid even in my casual clothing. I couldn't imagine how unbearable that must have been. And then I remembered. Our school was rented from the Forest Service field office building, wasn't it? It wasn't strange at all for Forest Service trucks to be doing some kind of work in the schoolyard. Besides, what did four strangers do anyway? I felt bad for them having to work in such heat, and with such a stench about. They were taking colorful cargo out of the truck and lining it up in the schoolyard. They were containers, fairly large one, inside multicolored patchwork bags. Heavy too. They were being carried in pairs. They lined them up very neatly like tuna at a riverside fish market. Several dozens, hundreds of tuna were completely filling the fairly wide schoolyard up. I forgot my pain for a little while, captivated by this big forest ranger job I'd never seen before. As I stood there watching in a daze, the people in raincoats working on the other side noticed me. One of them pointed me out and shouted a few things back and forth. I thought they might yell at me for getting in their way, so I decided to leave post haste. But then two trucks drove up behind me. I stepped aside and they entered the schoolyard. Sheets covered their trunks, but I could tell they were completely full. As they passed, there was an awful smell that made me want to choke. It wasn't the same burned egg smell as before, but an even worse one. Like rotten crab meat. What on earth was it? I'd been enshrouding in one terrible stench after another all day. Then certain white letters emblazoned on the side of the passing trucks caught my eye. Ground self-defense forces. Alright, so I'm going to take two guesses at what might have happened. One is that he somehow transported himself into... 
the time period where the damn project did go through. In which case they're like maybe preparing the area to be flooded, perhaps. Alternatively, some terrible event might have happened and these containers are full of bodies. Maybe that's why it smells so bad. Some terrible event has happened and they're surprised to see someone else alive. Perhaps. What? Self-defense forces? Like the army? Why was the army in the schoolyard? Suddenly, someone slapped me on the shoulders from behind. I turned around, and a canopy SF SDF jeep was parked there. The SDF person had on a green raincoat and a gas mask like in the movies, carrying a compressed air cylinder. He didn't look normal. There wasn't an inch of exposed skin anywhere. When I tried to talk, I stretched a wound on my head. It made the SDF people exchange glances. I couldn't see their faces through their mask, but they seemed surprised. After seeing me tell them my name and address without hesitation, one of the SDEF people watching from the jeep started talking into a radio. Hmm. Okay, so a ter okay, so a terrible event has happened, and presumably everyone in Hinamizawa has died, or something like that. This is base. We copy. Secure the survivor at once. What is his status? I was prepared to go along with the police, but the STF? I couldn't help but think it seemed a little bit much. They urged me into the back of the jeep, and then they told me to put on this gigantic gas mask. I did so, and one of the troops fiddled around with it, strapping it tightly to me. It was heavy, hard to see out of, hot, and difficult to breathe. Just looking at the world through the lenses made it lose its sense of reality. My breathing sounded like some giant monster through the mask. At this point, I had no idea what was happening. With much trepidation, I asked the trooper adjusting my mask. Hey, don't ask, don't answer a question with more questions. I was the one asking you. That surprised me. Satoko pushed me off the bridge on Tuesday the 21st. That meant I'd been asleep on that riverbed for an entire day. He doesn't know. Should we tell him? Mm, I don't know. Had my question been that difficult for him, none of the troopers would answer me. Oh, boy. I lost my normal uh, text box. The one in the driver's seat talking on his own radio turned on the vehicles. He turned the dial and some broadcast station or another came in. I started to listen to the voice of a radio announcer I was familiar with. Yori, 
県知事からの派遣要請を受けて迅速に対応したものと思っておりますとこのように述べ要請を受けてからの自衛隊の出動は迅速であったむしろ県側の事態把握に遅れがあった可能性を示唆しましたそもそも自衛隊の派遣を要請した県知事は災害発生から前例のない大災害であることをいつ認識できたのかそして災害派遣要請までにいわゆるお役所的なロスタイムが生じ被害の拡大を招いたのではないか今後の究明が待たれています首相官邸より報道部の尾形記者がお送りしましたさてここでもう一度災害発生からの行政の対応を振り返ります In the middle of the night, between. Oh, music. Between June 21st and June 22nd, a large scale disaster broke out in Hinamizawa village, Shishibone. The details have not yet been investigated, but there was an eruption of volcanic gas from somewhere in the Hinamizawa area. The gas was relatively heavy, and as it spewed out, it began to flow. Oh, I've heard about this kind of thing, like not、uh, about this village specifically, but that there's like some there's some village somewhere. I remember hearing about it, I think it was like in a YouTube video, where like volcanic gas, it hasn't done it in a really long time, but it did at one point, and the gas is heavy. I want to say it was like carbon dioxide or something. So it wasn't even like it was a toxic gas, but because it was heavier than oxygen. It just pushed all the oxygen out of the way, and so everyone just suffocated. It was like a long time ago, and apparently it's been sitting dormant not that far away from the village, and if it ever goes off again, the entire village is pretty much dead. Which sounds like an awful kind of thing to happen. The gas is relatively heavy, and as it spewed out, it began to flow. The flow went down along a small river and headed directly into Hinamizawa village. After a few hours, it had covered the entire region. It happened in the middle of the night, 2 to 4 a.m. Every home and household in the village was afflicted, with most of the residents asleep. It is thought that all died without noticing the crisis. The catastrophe striking in the middle of the night caused its detection to come too late. Hmm. I wonder if. Keiichi, or maybe not even Keiichi, because you know how、uh, Rika died and we didn't cause it. I wonder if whoever did that, or maybe us without knowing that we did it, said, I, want, I wish the entire village would die. And then that happened. There is still one small opportunity to have noticed it 3 a.m. A news dealer shop in Okinamiya sent a vehicle carrying the morning newspaper to its branch office in Hinamizawa. Usually, the shop would be contacted upon the vehicle's arrival, but this morning that didn't happen. The news dealer's shop made repeated calls but got no response. The shopkeeper sent his eldest son to check on things, but they lost contact with him as well. はい。The Prefectural Environmental Disaster Prevention Chief was provisionally escalated to Director General and set up a disaster countermeasures office. 
however, without contacting the governor. The countermeasures came too late. And so it took about an hour for the governor to sober up, gain an understanding of the situation, and gather information. ま、県としても大災害を想定したマニュアルが用意されておらず、対応が常にご手に回ってしまったのが致命的でした。All households in the Hinamizawa village region were wiped out. There were over 1,000 victims. The SDF is still confirming the situation on the ground, but their results are predicted to only increase that number. この世の恐ろしい6月が突然湧き出すようなことはあるのでしょうか。卵の その有価水素が発生することはあるのでしょうか。詳しいことは分かっていないので、まだはっきりとしたことは申し上げられませんが、外国の例で温泉の地下のマグマだまりからガスが噴出したという記録がありますが、極めて貴重な例ですが、必
much less new no locations of. Wiped out? What does that mean? Don't they usually say how many died and how many were injured? How many people were alive? Where... Where did everyone evacuate to? They evacuated to, to their death. Eventually we came into view of Coach's Clinic. For the first time, I saw the flag of Japan hanging on the pole outside. Japan's circular sun hung down as though exhausted. Many SDF tents were set up in the clinic's big parking lot, and many strict security vehicles were parked there as well. When they saw the jeep coming, men in white clothing and gas masks came running out of the clinic, frantic, carrying a stretcher. And because of my owls, they forced me to lay in the stretcher anyway. People who seemed like doctors were looking at me and notifying the others of my condition via radio. And then, from the clinic entrance, people lying in stretchers were brought outside to replace me. Judging by their clothing, they were from Hidemizawa, and that's how I knew they were victims. They brought the stretchers in front of a truck. Two troops holding shoulders and legs, like some kind of baggage, picked them up and threw them into the truck. Trunk. Even. In the trunk of the truck, people's bodies piled in heaps. They were just like baggage, and that told me they were already nothing but shells. At that moment, I remembered all those colorful sacks filling the trunks and them lined up in the schoolyard like a fish market. Hundreds of empty shells. Corpses. 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 It's a lot of corpses. 